Hey guys, Brendan D here from Chad. Uh, giving a little recap on NXPI now. This is an example of kind of a bad risk reward, FOMO, and just acting fast in the moment. And it did work out, but it's an example of you really want more than a one to one risk reward because that's not sustainable. You would have to have an accuracy of greater than 50% to make anything. And uh, getting greater than 50% can be tough for new traders, if not impossible. So. NXPI. Now this gap down about seven or eight points on the daily, and the range of the pre-market was around between 94 and um, it was around 87 and 94 dollars. So I looked on the daily, had to scroll back to 2016, and just looked in this area here. Noticed that uh, some support, some resistance here, and that was around 94 dollars. I noticed there's a higher pre-market, so a very significant level there. Mark that up. Now, downside level wanted to see what was in that range that kind of lined up with the horizontal line, and that was this level here, just it's around 89.78, which was kind of a choppy uh, pre-market level, and just wanted to throw it down, or just in case it started selling off. So not the cleanest on the downside, but wanted to put something. So what I really liked was that this went down the view app right before the open when I was marking my level. So that had a perfect potential to go back up and test high pre-market, especially at this day level of significance. And, um, the, but the thing was the wick was so big. I know a lot of traders probably stayed away from it, um, but it did close above VWAP. I really liked being bought up on the one minute. So I ended up going long at the break of the wick of the opening range. And I know it's not the cleanest trade. And I know that my reward is at 94. My stop would have been, at, is, it was at VWAP uh, original stop. So that's one to one risk reward. And that's not sustainable, but you know, to take it an early trade in the day, sometimes you get this choppy whipsaw action and you know, it's it's more, it's a gamble, but I like the chart, I like the wicks. It showed more bullish than bearish, so I ended up taking the trade, and I, I was selling on the way up, and got out the last bit um, at break even. I moved up as I as I scaled out. I have an automatic um, hotkey that moves my remaining shares to break even. So that's what happened there. This is one share. It's a rounding issue. I've talked to DOS about it. maybe I can get it fixed, but basically I was left with one share and had to manually close that out. But at the heat of the moment, doing calculations and doing everything in your head and, and watching the chart spike down and stuff, it's just, I like to have this these stops that um, original stop was at VWAP and then uh, once I am in the money, I sell on the way up and moves it up to break even and then I just close out everything there. So I really like that method. I'm gonna make a video on that later, but yeah, so that's my NXPI trade, bad risk reward. But a stressful, you know, high in the moment trade that I had to take. So yeah, thanks guys. All right, second trade for the day was SYF. Now I came back after lunch and everyone was yelling at SYF. Four guys are yelling it in the chat. So I decided to take a look and see what's going on. So I was watching it, it was just selling off like crazy. Um, didn't saw the daily, it was going all wild and uh, didn't really know where a reversal would occur. But I wanted the trade and I saw this huge consolidation here. And what I was looking for is on the five minute, just making higher highs and um, there, I mean, you know, after this candle, this candle really got me interested. Some volume was coming in, small real body, and I've seen these where it's a small real body, a lot of volume, and uh, that means a lot of fighting going on. And thought, hmm, maybe we can get a quick scalp to this, this area here around 30.25. And the stop would be uh, around uh, $30. So. Um, I just thought it would make a loop, new five minute low, I'll get out. So I really had a risk reward at around, um, I think it was, I'm trying to look at this chart. I think it was 29.90 was my stop. I wanted to put uh, just below that wick was around 29. So a 10, I entered around 30, uh, it was a 29.99. So around $30 I got in. So my risk was 10 cents and my potential was uh, 25 cents. So out of 2.5 risk rewards, so I really like that after my disappointing NXBI trade that I ended up going in because it, it didn't make a lower low in the next candle. So I went in very cautiously, had a 10 cent stop if it was going to break below because it was making higher highs. I like those signs. And I was remember, I said, I said, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale out or sell some at 30, 25. And Rob would say, are you, are you doing PL? Are you looking at your PL? Are you doing technical? And I said, well, Rob, you know, I had a good, such a good entry here that, you know, if it doesn't break out, if it doesn't do this little ABCD and break above this uh, 3025 where, where just that's the breakout point, um, that it's going to go back down. And look at it, it did. 
So I wanted to lock in profits, but I'll, I was thinking, you know, maybe Rob's right. Maybe I should hold out till this uh, around a 30, 50 level on, on the five minute, which seemed okay. I mean, it seemed like it, it may go back to there, but it, it didn't. It was it was struggling. The vibe, it just it wasn't looking after this big punch here. I was like, oh boy, um, let's it's that's not looking good. So. I wanted to see if it would come up again or at least maybe touch this cannon one more time. It almost did and I just got out. Um, I got out some and then held it, uh, moved up my stop to break even. So that was at $30, my new stop. And it just was going sideways for minutes and I said, alright, this is, who's going to be in this? So I got out the rest with like a, I think a three or four cent profit over there. And um, you know, it wasn't too bad, but you say, you know, some people, this is the thing is that when you use technicals, you could be the doing the same ABC setup by using different different methods of entry and exits. Like Rob probably would have had Rob had an, um, a target of here at the moving average, which is perfectly reasonable. But mine was, you know, because I got in at thirty dollars, I'm gonna get out some here. I'm just gonna lock in profits. That is a technical level because it's the breakout point. So that is really what I. It's just just some insurance policy. If it doesn't punch in, doesn't go up, um, doesn't break out ABC, it fails then you lock in some profits if you have a good entry buying at the C level um, with the setup. And that was uh, that was my method there. And, um, you know, I didn't... I, the thing is, don't follow other traders. Always be your own trader. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But do what... Do your trading style. Don't mix someone else's in. Now, if, if you're strictly trading off the moving averages, you got to stick to that. Because I didn't do that. I went in this trade thinking, yeah, I'm going to get some of this. I said it in the chat. And that's where I'm going to get out. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, everyone's different. It's good to hear feedback and it's good maybe, you know, depending on if you had a different entry, maybe let's just say you entered here at the break, just at the breakout where it didn't quite break out, then your target would be at the at the 9 EMA on the five minute and your stop would be a new five minute low and you, you would have a risk of maybe two to one almost. So not the greatest, but that's, that's just a different, that's depending on your entries and your style of trading. So. Yeah, that's my thought on uh, SYF. It's not a bad trade, um, cautious trade, but still a fun trade and a trade to learn from.